well, I can't generate demand. That's not what Pmax does best. So it's simply yeah. just att atrophies. It's not going to be able to attribute as high of a row as, as it did before. This actually has nothing to do with actual backend metrics. This is just the audience that can go after how valuable was it? How warm was it? And where did it come from? We all don't have any answers to that just as of yet. When we take over a campaign, two things will, will kind of take place. One is because it is previously probably used to remarketing, especially with, and we don't, we don't know the levels though of meta. Mm -hmm. that, okay. What is, uh, we have access to GA4? Yep, we do. What is the volumes between social and paid oh. uh, search look like for the last 30 days? What I'm going to slightly assume is that there is potentially a drop in social paid social traffic as well. <clears throat> but uh, let me see what the T ROAS is. All right, so we have a 390. No. Uh, the highest is from organic and cross network. It's not showing anything about social. Could you share screen, please? Yep. Thank you. All right. It's a lot of organic search. Now, direct. Can we go? Let's look at the left hand side um, of the large menu again and let's go to reports. Yep. Let's do user acquisition. Yep. All right. We don't know if they're using any sort of UTMs, though, inside of paid social. Uh, let's scroll down, please. Yep. All right. Unassigned direct. Yeah, we'll need to see what he's doing on meta. Okay. At least just from a spend level, because this one right here could be, because what this is saying, he's not doing any meta. Okay. Which I don't believe is correct, because it could be using landing pages, you know, they could be doing something else that we just don't see here. Um, so that's, that's part two, whereas we'd like to get a little bit more, a little more data there. Moving back over to the Google Ads point, and now I'll go ahead and share screen now. Okay, yeah. Uh, a couple things. This campaign here uh, is on a steady decline, but they're, they're fairly equal of cost and conversions. This is since January. Yep. Now, one thing to note is the conversion value by cost has fallen below a 390. Uh, right after we took over here at 267 and 280. But this, I would imagine, is there, there's a trend here that's bigger than what we can see. Um, we, we, this one is going to be a downtrend in terms of, is it A, seasonality, B, our T row as targets have always been a little bit too high. This right now at 390, when we're getting a 260 and 270, is just is, is going to cause some underspending. So if we look at like the last seven days and we segment by day, we can see that with a T row as, and I actually just put a target here, a target row as, this will tell us what that target row as is set to. And you'll see that there's a, um, this is okay, get 390. And so it's like miss, 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 miss. We got it here. Um, but because the average is 280, it's gonna say, well, the only way to get up to 390 is by spending less. 
The problem though is if this is not doing actual cold traffic, this thing is just going to react to demand, not generate demand and mm -hmm. kind of just drag itself down with it. Um, this one here is at a also 390 um, and there will be remaining products. Sometimes it will hit it, sometimes it will not. Uh, but because the average on the last seven days is 3.24, where our time lag is two days, it's gonna it's gonna cause also an additional underspend. But what we don't know is what was Pmax doing before. We know it, that it had a bunch of remarketing audiences, and we know that it can take credit for any touch point. And so, because this may have taken all of our warm traffic and simply just removed it it's not going to be able to attribute as high of a row as, as it did before. This actually has nothing to do with actual backend metrics. This is just the audience that can go after how valuable was it, how warm was it, and where did it come from? We all don't have any answers to that just as of yet. So this is, is essentially saying, take all the warm traffic out, but still get me what you used to. It says, well, I can't generate demand. That's not what Pmax does best. So it simply yeah. just at atrophies. Okay. Um, Usually I would say drop that T row as goal, but because the client is only going to measure us by in-app T row as, I would just, we, we can do two things. One, have long, hard conversations with the client by saying, here's why you hired us and what we can do and how we can grow your business. Or two, acquiesce to his requests and simply throw in brand and remarketing audiences, existing customers, and just fluff that up until his business maybe stabilizes or dies but it's gonna be dependent oh. heavily on meta too yeah he's he'd be totally willing to have that uh do do this or things go down the tubes real fast conversation because he's he's a he i just and like i was covering for Rindy while she was gone with family stuff and he he basically just emailed us the friday or saturday and said that He's he's already in the position where they have to make a decision about whether or not they want to even like keep going or not. So it's better to have the hard conversation now. Yeah, yeah, and I think we don't have any sort of metrics on like CAC or all the other stuff. No, no, I don't. And that's and that's where um that's where we'll definitely want to say hey, there's there's a you know P that's the one thing to know with everyone is Pmax rarely, not always, rarely um generates demand um it will capture demand well very very well will it generate demand not as often and it's just a good rule of thumb to think about when you're developing a strategy is will this generate demand or will it react to demand on a downtrend of a business and a, in a campaign that won't react or what won't generate demand is very, you know, that's where you start to see that kind of like pushing rope thing where it's just going to slowly decay from a hundred dollars down to 30 as you know, the client's volume dies off. Um, at these levels here, it's hard to pay for our own, um, our own fee. Yeah. So those are the things is, is, you know, always just kind of keep that in the back of your mind, which is, are we able to generate demand? Not maybe necessarily standard shopping. We only spent a hundred bucks. Um, in the last week out of a thousand. So our, we may be really, you know, we have 95 cents, <laughs> so it's okay. Um, like these aren't really doing much. Um, so we do have standard shopping, but I think by measuring in app, that's, that's where we kind of chase our tail into, into submission. Um, what I would say is in order for us to come back to him and say, Hey, we have to have the hard conversations. I would definitely point to this trend here. When there is cost, there is conversions. But since January, you've been on a slow and steady decay. If we're looking at chasing ROAS into the ground, um, and chasing ROAS into the ground means that I mean, even expand this one here, and be like that is not going to help. Um, that chasing ROAS is where we will win the battle, and you'll lose the war. So you'll pay us until you can't pay us anymore. Um, so that's always that kind of hard conversations that we would we would end up in. But um, what we say is looking at, you know, kind of new lead generation and new client acquisition, we have to, we have to flip this graph. We have to start to spend up. Um, restricting it by don't spend unless you can does not generate demand. Um, that is reacting to demand. And that's true across every platform. Um, you know, if you don't spend unless you generate demand, it's kind of like a cart before the horse. 
It's like, hey, go tell all those people about this new product. And they're like, okay, but don't tell anybody that's not interested. It's like, wait a minute, how do I, how do I introduce with restrictions? So it's kind of like an oxymoron for Google. So that, that means that it'll just kind of, you know, it'll head off into the, well, there is not a Forex here, so I will just stop spending kind of thing. Um, the detailed part of this is we don't necessarily know how this has been trained since, you know, the inception, um, which means if we look at all time, these campaigns have been trained since June of 2022. Yep. So this will take uh, approximately 90 days to quote unquote relearn. And they may never really relearn if we keep the restriction here by saying, don't learn, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. kind of like, uh, yeah, so that's, and again, this isn't a, a um, this is me, not me beating it up. It was, it was me just kind of saying like, here's some, some good ways to think about this with when we go to the client say, in up is cool, but um, we're not, we're using omni-channel campaigns in a unknown omni-channel marketing platform, which is your business. And we don't know where these are coming from. We know we can generate demand, but if, if this actually can head in the really right direction, if they spike meta or if meta does better or if meta is doing well, this will start to react to that. And it'll look like a really good high row as, and we've all been privy to that when people are like, you know, oh, they spend five times more than us on meta and they're increasing spend is doing really, really well. And we just kind of ride on those coattails. That's what PMX will, will normally do. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of a good, uh, I'm glad you brought this one up. Thank you, Reedy. I know this is, this is like, you're like kind of in the hot seat, but not, not really, cause this is never anything personal. It's just more of how to leverage Google's, uh, algorithms, I guess I would say. Um, okay. Yeah, the insights reports look good. I mean, the you know good non-brand cold traffic. This may actually work really, really well if you just switch this over to maximize conversion value. Honestly, this could be as simple as that. Um, the only reason why this is not necessarily performing is just because our T rows restrictions are too high in a channel that, um, or in a in a in a company known as Google that doesn't attribute you know completely well. Uh, Glenn, what's up? And um, I was actually just thinking of that. Just before you said it, what about changing the the um, the strategy. Max, max conversion value? Yeah. Then set up a search, a shopping, uh, YouTube display RLSA, and that handles all the retargeting. That's so the only. The, let the oh, PMAC okay. do the prospecting theoretically. With no T ROAS and then set up RLSA other channels. And that's that's exactly right. The first thing I honestly would do is just take off the T ROAS. Mm. See if this can generate any demand on its own. If it cannot, because even though yes, there is no remarketing signals in there, it will still do remarketing. That's that's mm. something I've I've proven so many times with my own campaigns where I'm like, all right, I'm I'm now suggesting things that Google Chrome is just ignoring. And then and sometimes for good reason. Um, but I think what's interesting about this is here's, here's the good news is the blue line, and the red line are matched. And that's, that's where I see light at the end of this tunnel is if the, if the blue line was like this and the red line was like that, uh Oh, but this could be that, like, if you flip this graph around and we took off the T row as, and the blue line and the red line did this, then problem solved because the, the search terms that we can see look decent. Like they don't look bad. That's what I'm saying is this is not something I think that like is, you know, it's super specific, like to a really crazy degree, which is why I think T Roaz is is doing what it's doing. It's like, ha ha, I found somebody. And then it and then it converts them. <laughs> um, we're really not pushing in areas that that were unknown. So it's like, all right, we got one conversion from Le Grand Tango violin. How many clicks did we get on that one? One. Like that's what T Roaz is doing. It's like I found a person and then boop, converts them. Which okay, good. It knows people. How many does it know? We have to find out by removing that T Roaz. Okay. And that's when I see this thing is not. That's why I'm saying it's not generating demand. It is reacting to demand with mm -hmm. less than ten clicks in any sort of in any sort of direction. Typically.
this is how everyone measures clients wise, um, you know, CPA, ROAS, like what am I getting cost per conversion, blah, 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 and what does the return on ad spend? Um, these are the metrics that we should be counting. Um, this is something that all of these